Hi, this is Bob Rubart with the Oracle Technology Network, and I'm uh, still at Oracle Open World 2013 in San Francisco, and I'm talking with Oracle Ace Director Deborah Lilly. Deborah, how are you doing today? I'm doing very well. So, so I'm asking all the people that I'm talking to in these interviews to tell me about the most interesting project that they've been involved in in the last year. So, what would that be for you? I think at the moment, one of the most interesting things that I'm working on is a customer who wants to change completely what they're doing. Um, and I think the reason why that's really interesting to me is because we come along, we learn about all of the different things that are going on, and it would be great if we had a greenfield site, but most of the time we're spending our time going from where we are today to where we want to be. But it's quite interesting where a customer says, okay, I'm going to stop what I'm doing and I'm going to start again. And that, that's really quite interesting. You feel like you've got so many more opportunities to shape it. I would think that that's also extraordinarily rare. Incredibly rare. However, in this case, it's cloud that makes that possible. So what, uh, what specifically are they thinking about doing in terms of cloud computing? Um, they're looking at Oracle Fusion applications. And so, you know, if they upgrade their existing applications, it means um, it will mean a tech refresh and um, hardware refresh. And they're just saying, no, let's cut out all of that capital expenditure. Let's go to a cloud. Let's not worry about all of that. And then actually, then we can choose exactly what we want to do and not have to move from where we are to where we want to be. We can start again. There was, I'm reminded of a recent uh, blog post, I think it was by Joe McKendrick, who's a ZDNet blogger, who talked about, the, uh, uh, he, he made a claim that uh, IT people are not really in the best position to make decisions about moving into the, the cloud. What do you think about that? That's, that's really interesting. Um, I uh, was in South Africa recently, and I went to a presentation that was about a company who'd implemented Fusion applications, and the business were talking about it, and they were saying, you know, it was their decision, they did it, and the really real reasons that they did it for. And uh, they said, so now it's our company strategy. Everything's going to be in the cloud. And the IT guy from that organization um, I then had to pull them apart because it was where you don't know what you're talking about. You need IT to do this. IT have to have the governance. And I think um, they are poles apart in a lot of organizations. Um, and yes, the business has to make a decision about what they're going to use. But there has to be some IT governance in there. You, someone has to have... You need that enterprise architect because even though they might not be implementing it or maintaining it, it's an enterprise solution. It's part of an enterprise and you really do need some governance around it. Which leads me to my next question. Uh, some time ago you had participated in an OTN Arc Week podcast and I should point out too that Deborah's specialty is applications and app development. Um, you had talked about that you uh, a lot of your your job involves interaction with enterprise architects, and I wonder if you can talk to me a little bit about the nature of that interaction. What what sort of information is flowing from you to them and from them to you? So it's easy for me to come along and talk to an organization and say, you know, where is it you want to go? What are your challenges? You know, what is it that can help you achieve that? Um, and so it's very easy to say, yeah, you need this module of this application. But um, it is part of an enterprise. And therefore, you've got to see where are they today and what other things are they looking at? What are their strategies? And um, so that's the sort of information. It's gathering it across the whole enterprise. And I get incredibly frustrated where people are saying, um, use this Oracle tool and they get all of the um, feedback is, well, it's too expensive. It's, you know, my number one bugbear is the business intelligence. Okay. Um, uh, someone will come along and say, oh, the salesperson says we need the business intelligence applications for e-business suite financials. And I say, yes. And I say, that's based on OBIEE. -E. 
And they say, yes. And I say, and the E is for enterprise. Right? These tools are, the value is when you use them across everything and you bring that data together and, or you process your data across your whole enterprise. And so it's getting people to stop looking at point solutions and understand the whole thing. So I work really hard with the enterprise architects to make sure that they do understand everything that's there. And, you know, from within an organization, sometimes there isn't an, he might have the title enterprise architect, but actually he's only responsible for this pillar or this slice of the business. And that's not what's important. So it's about getting people to understand and to be able to articulate what they're doing with IT across the board. And then when you get a good architect, then it's brilliant. It's good fun. Now, typically you are a very busy public speaker in your role. So what are, what are you doing at Open World 2013? Um, so tomorrow in the Partner Exchange, I'm um, interviewing Jeremy Ashley from the User Experience team and talking about... Um, I want to bring out some of the things that the user experience team are doing with customers and I want to relay that to how I'm finding it in, in, in real life. So they do a lot of um, customer advisory boards and things and, and I've sort of got, now got the experience with customers who are you know, writing the checks. So it will be a good interaction, what we're seeing and what they're doing, how they're adapting things. And So that's tomorrow. And then on um, Wednesday, I'm giving a presentation, a, a case study about a customer who's gone through that process. Um, you know, why do I want to move from eBusiness Suite to Fusion Applications? And the sort of things that they've had to consider and the sort of problems that they've encountered along the way in the decision-making process. This is not about the product itself and the, and the, the project to put it in. It's about that decision-making process. Well, Deborah, I'm sure you're going to be very, very busy here, as you always are. Thanks for taking time to talk to me today. This is Bob Rubart from the Oracle Technology Network. Uh, stick around the OTN YouTube channel for more videos from Oracle Open World.